Ah, I love browsing the web, but sometimes the experience can be frustratingly slow. I wish the browser could help with that. The BF cache should help with that. The what? The BF cache, or back forward cache. When you navigate away from the page, the browser keeps the old page around in the background for a short period. So if you need to go back, it's available instantly. Oh, nice. So how does that work? By restoring the fully rendered page from memory, you save having to re-render the page from scratch. Or, worse still, having to go back to the network to re-download some resources that aren't cached. Here's a video of the BF cache in action to help you understand the speed up it can bring to navigations. And you'd be surprised how often you do this when navigating the web. 10 to 20% of navigations are back forward navigations for many websites. Would you like to make up to 20% of your page visits load faster? Instantly even? Definitely. So does the BF cache get used automatically? Almost. The BF cache is used by default without websites needing to do anything to enable it. However, websites can use certain features or APIs that prevent it from being used. And that's where DevTools can help. Oh, great. We love hearing DevTools tips. Tell us. When Chrome introduced the BF cache, we also gave you a number of tools to help you understand it. First up, we added a test to DevTools in the application panel. Click on that inviting blue button and you'll see a brief flash as Chrome navigates away to a terms of service page and then back. It will check if the page was restored from the BF cache or had to be loaded again from scratch. Here you can see it was restored. Great. Your users are getting an instant experience as they navigate back and forward around your site. However, if we try this other site, you can see there's a problem. And the DevTools test helpfully lists the reasons why. In this case, the problem is that the page uses an unload handler. That means the page executes some code when the page is being unloaded. And so Chrome decides it's best not to restore the page from the BF cache afterwards, as the page might not be expecting to be restored. There are a number of other APIs like this that prevent the browser from using the BF cache. Nice. That is a great testing tool. Yes, it is. And it only takes a second to run. Try it on your website now and see if you have any reasons preventing you from using this great browser optimization. Hmm. It seems so simple. Are there anything else we should know? Well, extensions can also add unload handlers to a page or other APIs that can block BF cache usage. So best test this in a guest profile or using incognito mode. Good to know. So is that it? Oh, we're just getting started. There's more tools that the Chrome team has added. Lighthouse also includes this test. When you run a Lighthouse audit from DevTools, you may also recently have noticed that flash to the terms page. That's because Lighthouse also does the same test and warns you if it fails. And as well as these lab tools, we have a not restored reasons API, which allows you to collect all the reasons for all your pages in the field from actual users. That's fantastic. Thanks, Barry. So tell me, what are the common reasons that prevent the BF cache from being used? The two main reasons are pages using cache control no store or unload handlers. The Chrome team are looking at both to see if they really should prevent BF cache usage in future. But in the meantime, sites can fix this themselves. Setting no store in your cache control header is a strong directive to the browser not to store it. This should be used for pages that contain personal and private information. For pages that you just want to be reasonably fresh, use cache control no cache, or even better, a short cache time, both of which still allows the BF cache to be used. Unload handlers are the other most common reason preventing BF cache usage. Unload handlers have a lot of other problems as well, especially on mobile. So Chrome is looking to deprecate unload handlers and allow the BF cache to be used in these cases. We already do this on mobile, as do all other browsers. And we're looking to do the same on desktop in the future. For sites that don't use unload handlers, they can enforce this with a permission policy, which is an HTTP response header sent with a document response. If you try and add an unload handler to the site, even in the console, the page won't let you. This is a good way of locking in the fact that you don't use unload handlers and also prevents extensions from adding them and thus slowing down your website. A quick tip for this one. You can override HTTP response headers to test this out. Let's add a permission policy header to prevent accidental use of unload handlers on our site. Now, when we try to add an unload handler in the console, we can't. That's really neat. Permissions policy is a great way of preventing unload handlers creeping back onto your site 
or from extensions adding them and slowing your website down. Oh wow, what a great review of BF Cache and how you can use DevTools to debug them. Thank you, Barry. No problems, you're welcome. And I hope that helps. And please comment below if you've any questions on this. All right, that's all. Go to this link to learn more. See you for the next DevTools tips. Ciao! Ciao.